What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to be going through a one arm pull up test to see where my one arm strength is at and I'm going to follow it up with a really simple campus board training session along with a uh, simple hangboard training session. The campus board session and the hangboard session, they're both really simple in terms of the complexity, but these are probably more of intermediate movements that I'm doing, but the same principles can apply uh, for anyone no matter what skill level you're at. I was really hoping for more more noise out of that one. All right, so I did all these exercises after a climbing session. I didn't take any videos of my actual climbing session. Honestly, I don't really know why, uh, but next time I do one of these, I will definitely take some videos of the climbs that I'm doing. I just do a bouldering session, so it's, it's nothing super crazy. But I started with the one-arm pull-up test because I wanted my full strength here. I didn't want to do anything that was going to compromise my grip strength, which would compromise my pulling strength. So the reason I'm doing this one-arm test is because I want to see where my strength is at right now. I just finished a six-week weighted pull-up uh, strength training cycle. And it was super helpful. I improved way more than I thought that I was going to, and I'm really stoked about it. So there was kind of two things to this. One, I wanted to see how much it translated over to one arm pulling strength. Then I'm also gonna be starting a six week training cycle for one arm strength. So this is kind of just uh, to get a gauge of my starting place. So for one arm pull-ups, I like to use a pulley system to do assisted work. This just helps me really gauge exactly how much weight I'm using as assistance, as opposed to using a band that is gonna be bouncing around all over the place. So today I started with body weight minus 25 pounds. Then I dropped a dumbbell to 20 pounds. Then I dropped to a 10 pound dumbbell. And finally, these were my attempts at body weight. So you can see these are uh, not great one arm pull up attempts. My left arm actually, uh, I get my chin over the bar, but it, it's definitely not clean by any means. Uh, and then my right arm, I don't get my chin all the way to the bar. So the story of this is the weighted pull ups didn't translate to one arms as much as I was hoping they were going to. But then again, my one rep max for weighted pull ups isn't at body weight, sorry, isn't double my body weight. So I guess it sort of makes sense that I still wouldn't be able to do a one arm pull up. But like I said, I'm starting a new six week training cycle. So this is just a starting place for me for my one arm strength. We'll check back in six weeks and see how I do. And if you wanna see any of those workouts, I'm gonna be posting all of them on my Instagram. Uh, so feel free to go check that out as well. All right, today I'm drinking Longboard Lager. It's from the Kona Brewing Company. I think you have to not see my face in order for it to focus. No, let's fucking hope that, that focuses. Uh, this is definitely one of, if not my favorite beers. It's just, it's light, crisp. It's not uh, a local beer by any means, but I just felt like having something light and crisp today. All right, next up in my training session was the campus board exercises. Because I had just done a bunch of bouldering, I probably did like an hour or so of bouldering. My fingers were feeling pretty warm, so I didn't actually do any warm up at this point. But the campus board workout that I did this time was super simple. It's sort of uh, an intermediate type of exercise. Basically what I did was eight rounds every minute and a half, you do eight moves. And in this case, I did five moves up and three moves down. I did five moves up because that's most of the thing that I'm trying to do, right? You're trying to get power in, but I really wanted to get three moves down because I wanted that contact strength. And when you're moving down, it's a lot harder because you're coming with all of your force downward, right? When you are moving up, you're kind of catching it at the apex of your throw. And so you don't have as much down force, but when you drop down, you're really like sinking into it with all of your weight plus some because of gravity. So you're really working that contact strength really well. The purpose of this is that the eight moves that you choose should be challenging but doable. So basically round six through eight should be really challenging. You should really be like having to grit it out, but you should still be able to do at least 80% of these moves. And you could also, if you don't get all the moves in one, you could and should be doing all eight moves regardless. So even if you have to do four moves, come down, shake out your hands, then do four more moves, that's totally fine. But if you're a beginner, definitely do this uh, with either lighter loads, maybe you're doing like hand over hand, maybe you're doing it with feet on and you're bumping your hands up, anything like that, it's still gonna work really, really well. Honestly, for me, I think that this was probably a little too easy, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, it's a bad thing because you're not getting the most out of your training, but it's a good thing because uh, I think that my finger strength is 
further along than I thought it was. So the next time that I do this exercise, I will probably do it with smaller holds or I'll drop down the time of each interval. So instead of doing 130, maybe I'll do like 115 or 110 or something like that. The other benefit of this type of training is that you get in a really high volume of pretty challenging moves with a decent amount of rest, right? So you're not killing yourself. You're not just like trying to do 64 moves straight without any rest whatsoever. But at the same time, you're getting in 64 moves on a campus board. Like no matter you're doing it with feet on or you're doing feet off or you're doing the tiniest holds, that's a lot of moves, right? So you're getting in this really high volume, but you have to make sure that you're warmed up and you have to make sure that you're choosing the right progressions because campus board can obviously go really wrong really quickly. All right, last on the training session was the hangboard work. The reason I do this last is because it is the lightest load, basically. Campus board is gonna be a lot more intense than hangboard, which is literally just dead hangs. But for the hangboard, I literally did the same exact, mm, I did almost the same exact movements as the campus board. I did eight rounds every minute and 30, but I did 10 seconds of dead hang and then a minute 20 of rest. This has the same exact purpose as the campus board work. It's supposed to be challenging, but doable. So I chose a 15 millimeter ledge to hang from, and this was perfect for me. This is what, it got real freaking hard at the end. I definitely had a had a grit through the last couple of seconds, so I'm very happy with that that load. I'll probably do that again for another for another session, maybe even two or three. So yeah, that wrapped up my training session for uh, post bouldering. It was super simple. I mean, it took me. Uh, I took a little bit more time on the one arm pull up stuff just because I wanted like full recovery. So it probably took me about 40 minutes to do, but the canvas board and the hangboard work. It's really effective in a pretty short amount of time. One last thing that I wanna say about this really quickly is that make sure that you are properly warming up for the campus board and for the hangboard work and make sure that you are using the right progressions for yourself. Always, always, always err on the side of the easier progression. You don't wanna fuck up a pulley. That's the truth of it. If you fuck up a pulley, it's gonna get real bad uh, and it's gonna be a really long recovery time. When I talked about the campus board session and being a little on the easier side, I kind of figured that it might be, but I would much rather do an easier training session than a harder one and potentially injure myself and then I won't be able to climb. And that's not worth it, you know? We're trying to get ourselves stronger, not weaker. So that's my last warning. That's all I'll say about that for now. If you wanna follow along with any of my day-to-day uh, -day workouts, follow me on Instagram for sure where I post very specific workouts on what I did that day. And I'm gonna be posting every single workout that I do for this six week one hour pull-up session. And if you wanna see one of the weighted pull-up sessions that I did, click this video right over here, where I walk you through one of those training sessions. That's all I got. Cheers, friends.